This is a rail cart. It's pretty much a go-kart that goes on train tracks. It's a unique way to see awesome places, go super fast, and have aura. And no, it's not some boring thing where you actually have to work to move around. In fact, you just sit on your Tommy Bahama chairs and have fun. Well, how did I get here? A few months ago, I saw a YouTube video of a rail cart for the first time and was like, I need to make this. But I couldn't find a good video showing how to make. Hopefully, this video will help you. In this video, I will go over how I build my wheels, body, brake, engine, and also everything you need to know about going to Goat Canyon Trestle Bridge. Oh, and by the way, I made a spreadsheet with all the parts I bought along with links and everything else you need to know. Check it out in the description. My final cost will be different from many of yours. Most importantly though, I'll talk to you about all the mistakes I made and additions I will be adding. Therefore, disclaimer, this is technically a part one video because this is just the basic frame and I will be fixing as well as adding a lot more to the rail cart. So let's get started with the wheels. You can buy wheels online, but like, they're super expensive. I also didn't have a lathe, so I couldn't just use a bucket to mold my wheels. So what I did was I 3D printed a mold that was perfectly the right size, so I didn't need to lathe off anything. I used this awesome free company called Onshape, and made a conical wheel design based on how I wanted it. If you want access to this design, or to see the measurements, everything is in the description, or also in the public section of Onshape. So to get started with the wheels, I rolled out some Play-Doh and put it around the bottom of the mold. I then used a flat sheet of plastic and laid the mold down over the top. Next, I filled in the gaps with extra Play-Doh and tied a rope around it to get it tight and secure. I then removed the excess. You may notice my mold originally had a top. After making the first wheel, I realized I would need to remove the top and cut a relief cut in the side of the mold. The polyurethane didn't bond to the mold, but the friction was too much for it to just pop out. So to save money, if you're going to print your own, take the top off before printing the mold. For the wheel itself, I removed the air nozzle, covered it with duct tape, and really roughed it up to make it bond better. Once centered in the mold, I put a 5 pound weight on top so it wouldn't move. Because I'm all about safety. I threw on gloves and this sick Breaking Bad awe mask. Before any of this, I measured out the volume of mixture I would need. It came out to be about 2,000 milliliters. So I did two pours, each of 1,000 milliliters. This is the polyurethane and dye I used. It's a 1 to 1 ratio, so pour 500 milliliters of your first mixture. Then add a bit of dye, not the whole bottle and the second mixture and stir. Carefully pour the mixture into the mold and then tap it out to supposedly get some air bubbles out. Now repeat. Keep in mind you only have three minutes of work time, so move fast and don't take dumb camera shots. Pour until you're at the rim or out of mixture. Don't waste any if you can, it is not cheap. After an hour and 30 minutes, it is dried and ready to be taken out. Remove all the excess stuff around the mold. The most important part of all this is clearing this crack. With a bit of hammering and scrapage in there, it'll come free and look like this. Taking a butter knife, Yes, one's in the kitchen. I worked my way around the bottom and top of the mold. Just kind of freeing up everything. Again, sorry mom about your knife. I then used a paint can and my body weight to get the wheel up. And there you have it. Here's another wheel. After cleaning them up and making two more, I'm super happy with how they turned out. This is the frame I'll use. It is made from one inch square metal tubes, and I had it welded by a friend because I cannot weld. I also tested everything. Yes, I know there's a wobble, leave me alone. For the deck, I'm gonna use a piece of plywood with the dimension seven and a half by four feet. 
I then measured and cut it to size using a circular saw and a straight edge. Yeah, I don't even know what this is. I then measured the hole for my chain. I had to use the good old drill out the corners method to saw it out. Useful tip, get help when moving this big old thing. So I low-key have no experience painting, so basically I just bought some old primer and put it on. Then I sanded it down and slapped some paint on as well, sanding between all three layers. I don't know why I chose black, other than the hope it would look cool. I then put the axle and its sprocket in its place. Use a 3 to 1 or higher gear ratio. A good setup to use would be a 10 tooth on the engine and a 60 tooth on the axle. Because I'm indecisive and change plans, I had to shift the whole axle assembly down a little bit. I then had to kind of pop some cubes out so that I could access the bolts for the bearings under it. I then drilled the holes and attached it. Lastly, using collars and keyways, I put on the wheels so that the middle of them were exactly 56.5 inches apart. I first assembled the band brake circle and lined it up. I then drilled into the frame to attach the pivot point for the pedal and the place for the spring to attach. I then used a screw and bolt for the other pivot point. I then put a pin through it to keep it on. I then filed and drilled through the end of a 1 4 inch rod, and then attached it using a pin. Using a hammer, I then bent it so it went up to the pedal and attached it once I found the perfect distance. I also braced it with this random ah piece of metal. Looking back at it, I see how useless and weak this brake is, but it's still cool to see how I made it, so I still put it in this video. I first unboxed the engine and put the clutch on. Warning, clutches like these are super weak for moving a 600 pound rail cart. Buy a torque converter, again more on this later. I then marked and drilled out long holes, like what would be on a metal engine mount. This way, I could slide the engine back and forth to add tension to the chain. Well, this was the idea, again more on this later. Goat Canyon Trestle Bridge was built in the 1930s and is almost 800 feet long. It's kind of the spot to rail cart, like where everyone goes. It's about a 7 mile round trip. You can actually start in the town of Ocotillo, but it's way longer and more overgrown. Instead, start here at the sick water tower. Put in water tower dos cabazas, not Goat Canyon Trestle Parking. Don't get popped by Border Patrol either. Getting there requires a good amount of off-roading. I would definitely recommend an off-roading vehicle, but I'm sure if you took it slow with a normal car, you can make it. To get there, we just used this 5x9 U-Haul trailer. It's framed perfectly lined up with the wheels, and we were able to strap it down on its own sort of track. Once you get there, put it on the tracks and load it up. We actually camped the night before, and it was amazing. Nobody was up there, and the burgers were fire. We went the next day. Also, I only strapped the chairs on because I will be adding permanent, better ones later. Sweet! Here are some clips of it in action. This is both at Goat Canyon Trestle and a testing spot near me. I will have a few clips of just the sound of it going, and then I will voice over all the mistakes I made.
The first mistake I made was the engine system. For starters, I need to weld an actual engine mount onto the frame and attach the engine to it. When tightening into the wood, it made it bend and sag a little, which caused the engine to be able to move. This caused all sorts of problems. Next, I need a torque converter. This will give me tons of torque from the start and eliminate the need for a clutch. When I built this, I assumed I would be fine with a gear ratio that did not need a lot of torque. I was wrong. To move a big cart like this, you need a lot of torque and even more so at the start. I didn't anticipate this and so my clutch burned out from all the weight. Therefore, in the future, I will use a 3 to 1 gear ratio or higher for more overall torque. I could explain for a while what a gear ratio is, but there are much better videos online. Go check those out. A torque converter will give me 3 times my gear ratio at the start and then gradually even out to your normal level. Therefore, if my gear ratio is set up as 6 to 1, right as you start moving you will have an 18 to 1 gear ratio and then as you get to high speeds it will gradually go back to 6 to 1 ratio. So additionally, in the future, along with my torque converter, I will have a bigger gear on my axle. Another mistake I made was my brake. While what I built worked, it was slow and no better than just using my shoe, and really was only good as a parking brake. These tracks are abandoned, and if I'm moving fast and I randomly come up on a big rock, I want the ability to stop quickly. So in the future, if possible, I want to add a real brake, like maybe one on a golf cart that can stop me immediately. Another small fix is I will be using locking nuts for everything, so nothing rattles off. My next major fix is I will probably change the aluminum top. While it was liftable with two people, I would be lying if I said it was easy to move around, and overall a lighter build would just be better. Over the next little bit, I will be upgrading and fixing this cart to make it better, and you will see all of these in my future video. Also, I don't know everything, or much at all, so feel free to share your knowledge in the comments about everything. Thank you so much for watching, and I know the build wasn't exactly perfect and had a lot of issues, but it was a real cart, and so if you enjoyed or this video helped you, could you please consider subscribing? Thank you.